It really has been interesting watching uh, Dr. Phil turn into the laser-eyed version and uh, of what he used to be. Instead of sending you know, unruly teens to the ranch, he's busy sending the woke lunatics to the ranch. And in just two, two clips, one clip in just under 40 seconds, Dr. Phil manages to completely destroy diversity, equity, and inclusion. In this other clip, he manages to completely destroy one of the demons, in my opinion, uh, who are saying that, uh, you know, kids should be able to, you know, choose whatever gender they are at three years old. Um, absolutely destroying a, a um, trans propagandist. And we're just going to enjoy this clip together. Today is my birthday. If you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, celebrate with me, the best gift you can get me for my birthday is just, if you haven't yet, if you're just a lurker and you watch, subscribe or follow to uh, my channel that would be an amazing gift i live stream monday through friday at 5 30 eastern although today i'll be live at 1 eastern on friday because i'm going to celebrate my birthday tonight um but that said let's get to the let's start with this one shared by the vigilant fox dr phil destroys dei activate uh, advocate in under 40 seconds so let's see some demographics come to the table and have to overcome. Just want to point out, middle-aged white liberal woman. These women are the most destructive force in the West. Probably single too. Racism, unconscious bias, misogyny. Uh, and so how misogyny. do we help level the playing field for everyone? Okay, so that means you're trying to create a quality of outcome. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what DEI is. Equity is, the, is what they want you to think is the same word as equality, and it isn't. Equity is cheating, okay? Equity is giving other people an unfair advantage, an advantage they didn't earn. It's part of diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's what I hear you saying about playing God. Yeah. How do you how do you create equality? A black guy against DEI. Oh, <laughs> good luck, white liberal lady. The of outcome. Uh, when people well, aren't you... the same, you're right. Some people are shorter. Some yeah. people are taller. Looking over that fence, they can't both play in the NBA. Right. Oh, that is one. Of, by the way, the NBA reference is one of the absolute best. Uh, it absolutely, like, it's one of the best uh, ways to combat if, if someone's ever arguing with you about DEI. Anyway. You can't create a quality of outcome. What gives a DEI program the right to come in and, and try and alter the, the, the nature of things to create a quality of outcome? So, That's been tried. That didn't work. That was called Marxism. Ooh, oh, oopsies. Oopsies. Oopsie doopsie doopsies. I mean, like the the idea that like you know, this exchange perfectly highlights the flawed logic behind DEI programs. Kudos to Dr. Phil for standing up and exposing the truth. Now we all know that DEI has basically been revealed to the world. Most people know that it's evil. Most people know that its its sole purpose is essentially to hamstring white people. Um, again, just so I'm clear, because it's always kind of weird being like this is you know like anytime you're like. This is bad for white people. People are like, oh my God, are you like, do you wear a sheet over your head on the weekends? No, I don't. That's only on every third Tuesday. But that isn't the point. The point is, that is how DEI actually plays out. It's not, it's not about like, are, are there, let's say there's a job, okay? And there's a black candidate, a, a white candidate, an Asian candidate, and you give them all the same opportunity, you do a skills test or something, whatever it is, you know, forklift driver or something, you put a little course together, you look at their experience and you hire the black guy. That's not DEI. Unless you said, well, actually the white guy, you probably shouldn't even be here because we have too many white guys that work here, even though you have perhaps more experience than these other two. Or it's to say, well, on a score of one to 100, which is what they do at college admissions at Ivy League schools, we're going to give the black guy um, 10 free points. We're going to give the Asian guy negative five points. And we're going to give the white guy negative 10 points. And that's how like DEI really works. And so unless you're the white guy or the Asian guy and you are so much better, even then you have only a slim chance 
at actually uh, getting the job. That's how DEI works effectively. That that is the, the in practice. I mean, there's a lot of in theory around DEI where you know ultimately you can take a look at you know hey we want to let's say we want a campaign we want to if a company wants to as part of their DEI for example buy more advertising in inner cities. I don't view that as a negative thing. If they're like, we want more, we want more, uh, or in black communities, which aren't always inner cities, okay? We want more black people working here, so we're gonna spend additional money recruiting black people. I don't have any problem with that. It's just when you're down to the application of the job, when you have the applicants of the job, all right, and you're choosing based on skin color rather than skill or fit for the job, that's when it's a problem. And the entire house of cards around DEI completely collapses when all you do is change the skin color of one individual. That's how you know it's a scam. And then you see this, Christina Buttons shared, big moment on Dr. Phil when a trans advocate is met with groans of disapproval from the studio audience after saying, quote, kids know who they are at three, four, and five. Expert Dr. Leo Sapir explains why detransitioners show us that, in fact, they do not always know who they are. And we just saw in, um, we saw in, was it two days ago, a, a new study, plus we saw the CAST study come out, which essentially disproves all of the trans propaganda that they've been pushing on, on parents and kids. Uh, you can see trans advocates ask the doctor how often detransition occurs. He says that regret can take a long time to manifest. But a 2022 comprehensive review of medical records in teens and young adults shows that 30% of them discontinued hormones after just four years. And I bet you, since, you know, obviously the, we've seen such a big explosion in the number of people who are getting indoctrinated to this cult, if you give it another four, five, six years, it's going to be 60, 70, 80, 90% because they're going to figure it out. People figure stuff out. That's the reality of it. The rate of uh, detransition will likely go up, the doctor says, because that gender affirmation protocol used in these clinics is based on the idea that, quote, kids know who they are without safeguards or questioning of these kids' motives and mindset. The rate of regret will increase, she continues. This clip is from the first episode of the series in which Dr. Phil explores the debate over trans youth. It features gender clinic whistleblowers, Jamie Whistle, huh? Uh, oh, that's because she's a whistleblower, okay. And uh, what is this, Ethan Heim, expert on gender medicine research. I, I don't even think, like, the, the idea, like, <laughs> just watch this clip. Well, the children know who they are, which they do, is this a biological man? I, I don't know. I don't know if the, this, this looks like it could be a biological man. I don't know. And their parents seek out the information to help them be happy in their skin. Who are you to block them from doing that? I think the important question was if children know who they are. Children do know who they are. At what age? At, at three, four, five. They know who they are when they're twisting and twirling. Ha, <laughs> the crowd booed. <laughs> the crowd booed. This new study, the CAST study that came out, essentially said that people should, you know, avoid doing any of these procedures or taking any hormones and stuff uh, till the age of 25. You know, your body is going through the most complex biological changes it will ever go around this age. Well, teenage, you know, a little younger for girls than guys. And we now know that according to the CAST report, that all these doctors that have come out and said, yeah, gen oh, oh, puberty blockers, there's no long-term effects. Wrong. There are, in fact, long-term effects according to this study. Oh, you could just pause wrong. That's not how it works. Oh, we should just, um, you know, chop off healthy tissue and, and do this and that. It'll help. You know, one of the most diabolical things these, these gender demons do, and I truly believe, even though like I'm not exactly the most religious guy, I think that these are demons, the people that would force this stuff on youth. They are, you end up in a situation where 
you have they're they're pushing this crap on parents and how do they do it right how do they do it well they say do you would you rather have a a trans kid or a kid that is no longer alive that was a very common way to press this issue the facts however do not now no longer sorry the facts no longer support and never really did because we didn't have hardly any data the facts now suggest that once these kids go and you know change their body forever in fact the self deletion rate doesn't go down it goes up you know why because of regret dr phil's out here doing the lord's work good on him hope you enjoyed this video we'll talk to you again real soon